which could potentially harm the environment. Okay, so here's acquiesce. So scale of square over northwest Oklahoma. Come forward 24 to 48 hours later. Let's see, within 36 hours, look where the tornado formed. At the center where the square was. Right here. Okay, this is just one example of many. Let's go over and look at the other pulses that occurred. Here's a different pulse from the same day. You've got May 7th at 9.38 p.m. You've got May 7th at 9.35 p.m., all right? Now, this is Eastern Time. This is Central, so they're one hour apart, and you can see it again. Pulses, and then the strongest part of the storm moved right into the center, right over Tulsa, producing additional multiple tornadoes, which I did document. Here they are. Okay, you can see all this activity if you want to come back and review that. So that's really three confirmations or two on one forecast alone, which is just me showing you that the pulses are occurring and then coming back and showing you the storms that follow up those pulses. Over a hundred times, folks. So that's why I don't do it now in the videos. What's the point? I've documented it over a hundred times. It's scientifically proven to me that it does happen, not just to me, but to hundreds of other people, if not thousands now, that have actually studied this and looked into it. Speaking of studying it and looking into it, I've put together a huge post, which you can come over and read for yourself. All the documentation is there. This is one example of many. On the left-hand side, this is from HARP. This is from the U.S. Navy, all right, on the left. They have a 3D diagram in the F region above the ground-based transmitter. This is color-coded by them, not altered by me at all. Here's the black and white pictures of the event, even showing rings inside of the plasma that was generated up in the upper atmosphere into the ionosphere. Okay, so on the right-hand side, this is an actual pulse that came out of Minot, North Dakota, recorded on NEXRAD radar. Compare the HARP image on the left to the radar image on the right, and you'll see the color coding is the same, the 3D representation is the same, I would venture a guess that the area is smaller, of course, above the next rad radar due to the peak pulse wattage at 750,000 watts as opposed to HARP at a billion. But the radio frequency coding is the same. You can clearly see they both produce a ring effect, and that's actual plasma that's forming. And it's my contention, not just my contention, but it's actual theory at this point that there's ionization that's happening at a distance from the ground-based receiver, whether it's a natural effect whether it's man-made, we're still trying to figure that out. It could be a natural modulation that causes the ionization to happen from a ground base station over 750,000 watts, let's say. We don't know yet because the studies haven't been done from the ground-based radar angle. NEXRAD WSR-88 has not been researched enough to find out whether or not it's producing its own plasma. Now, it's my contention that they already know this and that it's being done on purpose. Can't prove that yet, all we can prove is that it's happening and that the storms are coming to the center of the pulses within two to three days. And again, here's more diagrams. And again, storms hit each one of these areas within two to three days. And I'm talking the direct dead epicenter of the pulse. Within that small ring there, no more than 50 miles across, we're talking about being hit. Now, I've documented this. We're on my heart post here. I've documented this over and over again. All the proof that you need to prove scientifically that this can be done including corona effect discharge producing ions, including cloud condensation nuclei via frequency. Here's a company out of Texas, Acquiesce. Acquiesce, who over the past 10 years, the company Acquiesce has recently demonstrated this technology to government and humanitarian observer groups. The proprietary weather modification system operates by utilizing resonance signals to divert oceanic atmospheric rivers into areas experiencing severe drought. The Acquiesce system does not rely on chemical or biologically hazardous materials, chemtrails, which could potentially harm the environment. Okay, so here's Acquiesce, clearly doing it in Texas, 2012, with results. All right, so it's not even a matter of is it being done, it's a matter of why is it being done. That's where we are at this point. Here's a VLF signal. Okay, again, these are papers from respectable institutions. You can go put, download this from Stanford VLF site directly, showing the ring effect that happens from gra powerful ground-based transmitters when they're operating in a very low frequency. So here's a harp ring, for instance, in low frequency, showing as a low return, not a high, not a high, bright pulse like the ones we were just looking at, but this is a low return ring resonance. 
most likely caused by some kind of ground-based transmitter, the NEXRAD, reflecting off the atmosphere to ionosphere, causing a resonance backscatter, which it is my contention is then causing storms. And there's real-time radar heating effects. These are from IntelliCast and from the Weather Channel. You can go and see where the computer is detecting ringed signatures that are heated. It just so happens that these ringed signatures happen to be above powerful ground-based transmitters. These are high-frequency towers, high-frequency microwave towers. Here, this one's beneath an airport directly at the center. Those are just two examples of many. I've got over 20 or 30 examples just of the real-time heating happening above towers. Radio towers burning up the airwaves. So here we are. Here's some more examples. Heart One Hop Buoy, where they placed the buoy all the way down at the coast of New Zealand to catch the harp signal to detect where is it penetrating. Is it coming all the way down to Earth? Is it being reflected back up? What they found is that when they do this experiment, the signal travels this purple line here, goes down to the South Pole, where before it goes down into the Earth, it's actually reflected back. The conjugate point reflects back, and the signal is tracked. And they can fill it, they can pump it, they can keep pumping more into it over a course of a, of a certain amount of time, which is yet to be determined. I'm sure those experiments are very interesting. Okay, and then you can get down here, you can see the companies that are doing it. West Texas Weather Modification Association, weathermodification.org. These are all companies that are actively doing cloud seeding, and they use radar in conjunction with cloud seeding to observe those operations, which is apparently news to the National Weather Service. We won't even go there. All sorts of documentation on the attempt to outlaw these types of weapons, as they called them in H.R. 2977, talking about using high-altitude, low-frequency weapon systems, plasma, electromagnetic, sonic, or ultrasonic weapons, laser weapon systems. This is to ban weapons in space. And they're talking about ground-based transmitters here, not space-based weapons. Okay, here's examples of other facilities, Sura, ISCAT, you've got Chile, and even down here you've got the Russians with Irkutsk, I can even pronounce that properly. So it's not just the United States that's doing it, and surely it's not just for ionospheric research, as everybody would tell you. Stanford VLS, VLF Awesome Network is part of this. They work in conjunction with HARP in Alaska, and they're all trying to do the same thing, which is frequency manipulation of the atmosphere, ionosphere, and even penetrating down into the Earth. Here's something from the U.S. Navy. Showed this before. This is directly above HARP. This is the magnetic signal, the magnetic frequency represented on a 3D plot showing how the ionosphere from the ground all the way to the ionosphere is disturbed and perturbed in a circular fashion, a spiral fashion, as emanated from the ground-based antenna system. Here's more on the HARP conjugate points all the way down here to the South Pole and back and how it pertains to VLF-ELF interactions, very low frequency uh, interactions up in the Earth's upper magnetosphere where this all takes place. They'll pump a high frequency wave all the way up here into the ionosphere where it then modulates, cross modulates into a low frequency and then cross modulates back down into a high frequency once it gets back down to the point. That's another thing that you can look into. Um, efficiency scaling is what it's called. Okay, and we can just keep on going down this list here. Here's an MIT researcher. You can come over here. We got him to his back end page. It's still open. He's got pictures in there from when he went to Alaska. And look what he's got pictures of. Okay, he's a HARP researcher, went to Alaska to work at HARP, and here it is in his parent directory. You can go browse the parent directory to see all his stuff. All right, and it's pretty interesting to see. It's open for public use. It's not like it's hacking in anywhere, but here it is. It's in public, AGW photos, nothing but pictures of what we would call HARP clouds, which really are very low frequency propagating global waves, as they're called, and we've documented that as well. You can come over here and read all about global waves and how they're supposedly made, man-made, by HARP and other facilities. And we can just show you that here really quick. And that's in this PDF here, which also proves harp rings. It also talks about global harp resonance waves. Let's wait for it to open. All right, and here we go. Global magnetospheric resonators. And there's your global resonator. 
global wave. So we're talking about vast distances covered by GLF, by the way. Um, and here's the 3D ripple effect that's caused by the global resonance wave. Look at that. What does it look like? It looks just like what the sky looks like when you start seeing these clouds that are generated via man-made stations. So ultimately, I could give you an explanation every time I do a harp ring update, but it gets to the point where it becomes a 10 or 15 minute talk, even longer, where we have to go in and explain it each time. So I've done these time to time in the past, and people really jump down my throat in the past without the proper proof. This time, well, we have the proof, we have all the documentation, and this is just my site. There's other people that are doing this as well. Jim Lee, Resonator, Tattoo 1009. Several other researchers that are keeping track of these things. So much love, people, and all the links are down below, of course. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment field. And over here on my website, if you have questions on the current weather, what's happening now, how are we able to see what's happening at these different pulse locations, we have multiple radars that you can monitor yourself. And again, the links are down below. We begin with breaking news in North Texas, where at least six people have died when a tornado touched down. Firefighters using flashlights are now going house to house looking for anyone still trapped. ABC's Jim Ryan reports from the hard-hit town of Granbury. This storm rolled in from the southwest, and tornado sirens started blaring just before sunset. Witnesses say pea-sized hail soon turned to baseball size, and then hailstones the size of grapefruit were pounding at subdivisions near the town of Granbury not far from Fort Worth. Rancho Brazos is a subdivision of Hood County that's south of Granbury, about, about three miles by the way the crow flies out there, I guess. And it was, there's about 110 homes in that residential area. I've been told that most all of that is in heavy damage to totally destroyed conditions out there. As paramedics were rushing into the area to treat dozens of injuries, school buses were pulling away, taking evacuees to churches that have been turned into shelters. Those people are telling stories of an extremely intense rain-wrapped tornado that's done extensive damage to neighborhoods. It's been a devastating year so far. Um, things now with the weather coming around with tornado season, it's, it, this particular night is not anything like I've ever seen. Even as rescue operations were getting underway, another storm was forming on the outskirts of town, prompting new severe weather warnings. Jim Ryan, ABC News, Granbury, Texas. Additional storms did move through southern Oklahoma as well, but there's a lot of damage, a lot of poles toppled, a lot of power outages, so mm -hmm. just some wild stuff. Did you see the size of that hail? for the middle of the country. More tornadoes expected across the Midwest, all the way from Texas to Michigan. Those pictures are remarkable, Sam. I mean, and this is happening everywhere. Yeah, it will be by, by the weekend. We're looking into Saturday, Sunday, and we're going to even show you how it lasts into Monday. Amy, when you see things like this, we've had a very quiet tornado season. We've had so much cold air in place in the country, and so now we get those warmer temperatures, and here goes the tornado season. I do want to mention briefly that Granbury, uh, the